genuine concern, I think, for the U.S. government um, in the sense that because the parent company of TikTok is a Chinese company. Collect certain information about the device you use to access the platform, mm -hmm. such as your IP address, uh, user agent, mobile carrier, time zone settings, identifiers for advertising purpose, device IDs, your screen resolution and operating system, app and file names and types. On June 29, 2020, India announced that they would ban 59 Chinese apps, including TikTok. At first, many speculated that this was just a scare tactic and that the ban would not last that long. But two and a half years later, TikTok is still banned in India, and it doesn't seem like things will be changing anytime soon. Around the same time that India banned TikTok, President Donald Trump was making a lot of commotion about banning TikTok as well. He actually nearly succeeded given that he introduced an executive order that banned software updates and transactions through TikTok. This order didn't accomplish all that much though as President Joe Biden would swiftly revoke this order after taking office. Since then, it seemed like the whole era of TikTok viewers was finally coming to an end. More and more creators would expand to TikTok or completely switch to the platform. And for a brief period, TikTok even became the most popular site in the world, beating out Google.com. It very much seemed that TikTok was here to stay like WhatsApp, YouTube, and Instagram. But more recently, it appears that TikTok viewers have started to ramp up once again. At the end of 2022, Congress banned TikTok across all federally owned devices, and since then, this ban has expanded to basically every institution that's even vaguely related to the government. This includes dozens of states and public schools and colleges like the University of Oklahoma and even UT Austin. There's even a push from the FCC to completely ban the app from both the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. And considering that Apple did not hesitate to ban Fortnite a few years ago, they probably will not hesitate to ban TikTok especially if they have government support. But likely the biggest threat for TikTok is the fact that both sides of Congress are now taking this issue seriously. In December, a Democratic senator suggested that Donald Trump may have been right about TikTok and that the sooner we bite the bullet, the better. So banning TikTok is no longer just a right-wing talking point and the US is by no means the only country having these talks. In fact, China themselves does not allow the global version of TikTok to be used within their country. So why is TikTok getting banned around the world? Well, the answer isn't rocket science. The reason that TikTok is getting banned is because it's considered a national security threat. But if that was the case, how was TikTok able to get so large in the first place? Why wasn't TikTok banned right from the start, or at least much earlier than now? Well, to answer this, we'll have to take a look back at the origins of TikTok, which date back to 2012, when a young engineer named Zhang Yiming established a company called ByteDance in Beijing. ByteDance's first app, called Nehan Duanzi, came out in March of 2012. This app centered around sharing funny jokes and memes, and while seemingly harmless, there was something much more sinister going on in the background. Like Facebook and Google, the app was very much focused on collecting user data, and this wasn't Zhang's first rodeo either. Before founding ByteDance, Zhang was developing an app that could use user data to serve them news articles that they would be fond of. Zhang simply modified these algorithms to work with memes and funny videos, and this was a roaring success. Within six years of launch, the app would be able to reach a whopping 200 million users. It turns out that when you show people what they want to hear, it's quite easy to garner their attention. We've seen a very similar phenomenon in the US, which has led to the creation of echo chambers across social media. But this success did not last all that long, given that the CCP would step in. In 2018, the CCP would ban Nehan Duanzi for being too vulgar. While it's true that the app did circulate a bunch of dirty jokes and memes, this was likely not the reason for its ban. The real reason came down to two things. One, the app was circulating memes that poked fun at the Chinese government, 
calling the president Winnie the Pooh. And two, China prefers that their citizens are generally doing productive things, and this app could not be described as productive by any stretch of the imagination. So that was the end of Nehan Duanzi. But ByteDance likely didn't mind too much because they had something much bigger in the works. You see, two years before Nehan Duanzi got banned, ByteDance launched another app called Douyin, which is the original Chinese version of TikTok. Initially, Douyin was widely known as the Musical.ly ripoff, but that was honestly more of an insult given that Douyin was much more powerful than Musical.ly ever was. The reason? Well, Douyin was built to get users addicted. Zhang used all of his experience from his news app and his meme app to concoct an irresistible app. It played into many of our primal instincts like our desire for instant gratification and constant stimulation. Later in 2016, Douyin would launch outside of China under the name TikTok. About one year later, ByteDance would go ahead and acquire Musical.ly for $1 billion. And shortly after, they would merge the two apps together, giving rise to the TikTok that we all know today. Almost instantaneously, TikTok caught the attention of regulators and country officials, but likely not for the reason that you would expect. The initial concern wasn't even national security. The initial concern centered on the content itself. To put it bluntly, many countries felt that TikTok encouraged brain-dead behavior amongst young people. And objectively speaking, this is true given that we would see trends like devious licks. Some countries also felt that much of TikTok's content was obscene, immoral, and vulgar. And this is very much true as well, given that half the content on TikTok is just thirst traps. At first, countries simply tried to talk common sense into people, but when this proved to be ineffective, they started cracking down. Some countries decided to punish those that were producing this content and make examples out of them. Egypt, for example, would throw five women in prison for simply making TikTok videos. One of these women was literally arrested for telling her followers that they could make money by working with her. Fortunately, most countries did not go that far, and they simply stopped at banning the app like Indonesia, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. But wait a minute, isn't China also not a fan of such unproductive content? Well, yes, and that's why they would crack down as well. But fortunately for ByteDance, they wouldn't go as far as banning the app. Instead, they simply wanted ByteDance to reduce its addictiveness and spread more positive, productive content. ByteDance would obviously abide, and this is what led to Douyin and TikTok becoming completely different platforms. While the app's functionalities are identical, the content is radically different. If you're a kid in China, your daily usage of Douyin is limited to 40 minutes, and all the content that you're shown will center on science experiments and museums. One social media analyst describes the difference between Douyin and TikTok as spinach versus opium. But TikTok wasn't just shortening attention spans and getting people arrested. Given the insane popularity of the app, it didn't take long for bad players to start leveraging the platform. In late 2019, for example, the Islamic State started using TikTok to spread their beliefs. They posted content that showed them capturing people and even beheadings. Around the same time, TikTok also became a breeding ground for misinformation relating to COVID-19 and the 2020 election. Things got so bad that TikTok had to go in and delete 340,000 videos about the 2020 election and 50,000 videos about COVID-19. Two years later, it doesn't seem like things have gotten much better on TikTok. NewsGuard found that as much as 20% of news-based content on TikTok contained some form of misinformation. Clearly, this war against misinformation is very much ongoing. But it didn't take long for countries to realize that all of this unproductive content was just a singular battle, a distraction. The real war was the cyber war against China. The idea that TikTok collects a bunch of user data is not a theory, it's a fact. It's actually blatantly specified in their privacy policy on their official website. Here's some of the information that they collect. IP address, location data, keystroke patterns, mobile carrier, and even biometric data, including face prints and voice prints. 
They also analyze all of the videos that are posted on the platform to gather further information about location and the people in the video. And those are just the variables that TikTok openly admits to collecting. In the past, TikTok has gone as far as trying to hack through Apple's privacy policy to collect more data. They have also successfully bypassed Google's security protocol. Fortunately, Apple and Google did catch on to this, but that just goes to show how far TikTok is willing to go. And the reality is that if TikTok was truly just trying to serve the most relevant content and make the most amount of money possible, they would not go to such extents because they would not want to risk getting banned by Apple or Google and risk long-term revenue. But given that they're willing to risk the future of the company on collecting more data, their intentions become a lot more shady. And it didn't take long for evidence to start popping up. In August of 2022, for example, Forbes revealed that 300 current TikTok and ByteDance employees had previously worked for Chinese state media. While this is suspicious in its own right, the story doesn't end there. For obvious reasons, TikTok was not a fan of Forbes exposing this information. So they started spying on Forbes journalists to try to identify their sources. Ironically, Forbes would end up writing a story about this as well. And the craziest part is that TikTok did not even try to deny the claims. They admitted that yes, some of their employees had been spying on Forbes journalists. However, according to TikTok, these employees acted on their own accord and do not represent the company's actions. But you can take that for what you will. Also, everything that we're covering is simply public info. Organizations like the CIA likely have a lot more dirt on TikTok. But then, why wasn't TikTok banned two and a half years ago in the US along with countries like India? Well, the answer is politics. Two and a half years ago, the 2020 election was just around the corner. And Democrats could not risk agreeing with Donald Trump as that could sway swing voters. Also, I'm not picking on the Democratic Party specifically. If Democrats were in power and they proposed a TikTok ban, the Republicans would not have risked agreeing with the Democrats either. The Republicans would have probably framed a TikTok ban as some sort of attack against free speech. And these party politics gave TikTok the perfect opportunity to double down. It wasn't until after Joe Biden revoked Trump's TikTok ban that TikTok started collecting biometric data and trying to bypass Apple security. So it looks like there's no one to blame for TikTok's power other than our own government. At this point, the evidence against TikTok is becoming irrefutable and the midterm elections are over. So it looks like both sides of Congress are finally starting to take action and do what they deem is appropriate. This appears to include banning TikTok altogether. So far, they've only banned TikTok across government organizations, but it's also only been one month since they started taking this threat seriously. So it's more than likely that more bans and restrictions are around the corner. And while you can argue all you want that ByteDance isn't doing anything that American companies weren't already doing, the reality is that the US would rather have American companies have this data than Chinese companies. So if you're an avid TikTok user, you might want to get used to Instagram Reels and YouTube Shorts because the era of TikTok may soon be coming to an end. Would you support a TikTok ban? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you think that a TikTok detox would be good for society. And of course, consider checking out our Discord community to suggest future video ideas and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari and I'll see you guys on the next one.